guys, and welcome to Getting the Job International Student Edition. Today, I'm really excited to be chatting with Krish Mehta, who used to work at McKinsey, and as of this year, has actually accepted a job at Tesla. Thank you for being here, Krish. I wanted to, you know, get to know you a little bit. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, your story? Sure. Hi, Anna. Great to meet you, and, and hi to everyone who's listening. Uh, just a little bit about myself as a brief introduction for folks on the line. Uh, so I'm originally from Bombay. I grew up um, spent all of my schooling years at, at home and um, came to the U.S. for my undergraduate. I went to the University of Pennsylvania, where I studied um, finance from the Wharton School and then engineering from the School of Engineering. Uh, post undergrad, I went to McKinsey, as I now mentioned, where I was a manager in sustainability practice. And after that, most recently, I just began work at Tesla um, about two weeks ago in the finance team. Very cool. Do you have any like fun facts? I know that's a redundant question these days, but. Um, a few. Uh, I guess one fun fact that's most relevant for probably the, the audience. Um, so I was supposed to be interning at Morgan Stanley during my junior year, and I was doing investment banking in New York. And uh, because of some visa constraints and like unforeseen issues, uh, my internship ended up getting canceled on day two of the internship. So I had to sort of scramble, I had to leave the country first off and then scramble to find a new internship. Uh, so I ended up working in Argentina um, with a former Wharton alum uh, uh, to, to develop a sustainable plan for Buenos Aires. Oh my God, that, that's definitely a fun fact, a crazy fact. want to, you know, get a little deeper into that in a second. But so you said you studied finance and engineering both at University of Pennsylvania. So at what mm -hmm. point in your like college career were you looking for this internship? When did you start, um, you know, sophomore year, junior year, senior year? Uh, I would say I started looking for internships in the U.S. my sophomore year. That was when I was first looking to find some type of job. Um, uh, just for, I would say at Penn specifically, um, the people tend to be pretty focused on getting internships. So there's a bit of a culture towards like finding a job. So sophomore year is a bit early is why I mentioned that. Uh, I never ended up finding an internship in the US during sophomore year. No one was taking internationals, um, or at least none that, I, none that I found were taking um, internationals for a sophomore year internship that that was in the fields that I was interested in and then junior year was when I was looking more heavily and more seriously for an internship. Okay and what did that process look like? I know it can be a little bit daunting. How are you finding places? How are you keeping track of them? Mm -hmm. So um, I think uh, Ben actually does a really good job with that so we had like a list of um, all the different companies who are coming in and, and interviewing students. And often you, there was a, they would usually mention whether they took internationals or not. So typically it wasn't too big a challenge figuring out if a company took an international. Uh, there was some of the odd interviews where I would go in and, and interview with someone and then they would say they don't take internationals, but uh, I can't say that was too frequent. That happened a few times. Um, that said, the internship process itself was very strenuous for, um, Anyone who's listening and, and going through it, uh, it, it is challenging. So um, I guess just don't give up and, and keep going. Uh, just so you know, um, I myself, I think I interviewed with a total, I did first round interviews with a total of about 45 companies, which is absurd. That is an extremely large number. And uh, of those 45 companies, um, I think I had got 43 rejections out of 43 interviews. Oh my God. And uh, I, got, I got several second rounds, but um, even after the second rounds, I, I just never got the job. And it was only my last two jobs where I was like, okay, I really need an internship. Like at this point, there's no other company left um, that, that I managed to get two offers for my last two, but it was just 43 straight rejections. So it is, it is painful and challenging. Oh. I've been there. I feel like more than rejections when people don't respond in any way where you're like, am I rejected yet? Or are you still waiting? Like I'm hopeful. So I think like that was one for me. I know you said you did engineering and finance when you were looking for a position, what type of positions were you looking for? Was it specific or were you more broad on what you wanted to do? Yeah. 
So, um, so I made a mistake. Okay, so just just to start there. Uh, so I said, okay, I am doing engineering and finance, and I was interested in both fields. Um, and so I ended up recruiting for everything along the lines of uh, engineering, project management, uh, investment banking, sales and trading, private equity, hedge funds, consulting. Like I was doing all of those like processes, which is why I I got so many, or which is why I went through so many companies and interviews because I was I was so spread out. Um, I can definitively say that that is a bad strategy for anyone thinking the same. Please do not do that. There's a reason I was rejected 43 out of 43 times. Um, I would highly encourage anyone listening to focus on one field, maybe two, if you are like really, really devoted to it. Uh, but don't do anything more than that. Like, like one would be, would be best case. So I know, I know you mentioned too that you had like gone into some interviews where you know, you'd sat through the entire interview and towards the end, maybe you did have great synergy, but they let you know that they didn't sponsor. So between that and these 43 rejections, and I'm assuming that might've just been for your internships, how did you stay motivated to continue looking and how did you cope with getting those rejections? Yeah, I mean, it was stressful um, for sure. Uh, it was tough as well to stay motivated. I don't know if there was any one thing I did um, in my mind. I just, I just made it. I, I don't know. I just decided that I wasn't going to give up and then just keep going. Um, I think it also helped knowing that rejections happen. That this is a part of the. I mean, the job process just speeded, and, and this goes for internationals and American students. Finding a job is difficult. So if you get rejected, know that everyone goes through it. It's very normal, and it, and it's it. It doesn't matter what profile or, or what uh, background you come from. Rejections are just inevitable. So uh, I, I think the best course of action is to just keep moving forward. No, that's great. And I know you mentioned as well with your internship that unfortunately didn't work out. Visa struggles are very real and difficult for you and your employer on day two to have to have leave, leave the country and kind of pivot your strategy. But to still be able to be in that situation, find yourself another internship, that too in Argentina, how did you do that? And how did you manage on a short timeline to get something like that happen? Yeah, so that definitely sucked. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I mean, I'm not going to get too into the, the actual visa issue itself because it's a bit complicated. Mm -hmm. But effectively on day two, um, uh, my employer, myself, and Penn realized that. Um, the way I'd filed a document called my CPT was incorrectly filed. And so um, because I'd already worked for two days on an incorrect visa, I was uh, forced to leave the country. Mm -hmm. So I ended up leaving pretty much ASAP. They told me I had like three days or something to pack my bags and get out. So I did. Um, otherwise, that would cause future issues with, with, my, um, with my US visa. Mm -hmm. So I went back to India first. And um, my first reaction was, okay, how do I find a new internship now over, over summer? And uh, I reached out to a lot, maybe all of like the Penn India alums who were doing work in fields that I was interested in. And the Penn India network is incredible. So huge shout out and thank you to them uh, through their support. Um, I found a number of different exciting opportunities and, and people are very generous with, with their time and their offers. Um, I eventually, uh, however, found another opportunity, again, from an alum who was based in Argentina. Uh, he and I had met uh, prior to when I was going to start my internship with Morgan Stanley. Uh, I was backpacking in Argentina, which is when, when we met. And um, because we had a good conversation, I decided to reach out to him. And he was a former partner at BCG, now working with the government to help them uh, effectively be more innovative and uh, focus on uh, future growth and future technologies. And uh, he is, I mean, he's, he's a, a, a true mentor uh, of mine and, and continues to be so. And he generously um, offered to bring me to help him. So that, that I think was one of the best experiences of my life, actually. So I spent about two months working with him in Argentina. Wow, no, that, that sounds amazing. Um, I guess 
one thing that a lot of people have been reaching out about is they feel like if they don't have this big name company on their resume that everyone recognizes or they don't have a US based company on their resume their junior year that's going to negatively impact them going into the recruitment season as a senior. So clearly mm -hmm. in your case, you know, you navigated it successfully and you got a job at McKinsey which is very exciting. So how did that work for you? How did you take something like that experience and pivot your recruitment strategy going into senior year? Yeah, well, I think first off, um, well, two things. Uh, first, I imagine that that's a concern for a lot of folks right now, given the current situation. Mm -hmm. So, uh, spoiler alert, I, I don't think you should be worried. Uh, the second thing that's also equally interesting is at that time, when this whole thing happened, that was my primary mindset as well. It was hey, I didn't have a big name internship. I didn't have something that, you know, you could point to and, and there was a big brand associated with it. And I was extremely nervous about finding a full-time job um, for the same reason. And actually, incidentally, I went to the Penn uh, Recruiting Services and um, I, I was pretty close with them in the sense that I would often go to them for help and for advice. And uh, I remember talking to a representative there and they actually told me, Hey, without like a big name, you have basically like a 0% chance at any banking specifically jobs. Um, and then unlikely any consulting jobs either. So they actually recommended me to, to look for like other jobs, which um, I suppose not, um, not, not as well known or not as competitive. Um, I remember walking out of that, that conversation just being like, okay, you know what, I'm just going to try it anyway. What's the worst that can happen? Um, so I ended up recruiting both to finance and consulting full time. So I went through both processes. Um, I will say it, it was extremely uh, uh, strenuous and, and challenging. Uh, unlike my internship process where I had a number of companies who were willing to speak with me um, for full time because I didn't have a strong name, there were very few. That said, I was able to network my way into interviews with companies. And the big pivot I had in my approach was rather than going very broad and, and applying to multiple companies and, and going through many of these interviews, um, because I had such a small pool of companies interested in even interviewing me, I made sure to give it my all when I got, got the interview. And, and then I'd spend like two or three days or even more just prepping for that one single interview. And then those went well. And so uh, it's funny because for my full time, um, of the seven companies that interviewed me, I got an offer from all seven. Wow. And that was just a complete shift from what it was earlier. And uh, it was both in banking and in consulting. So I had an offer from Goldman Banking and then McKinsey Consulting. Um, and then it just came down to me wanting to go to consulting that I chose McKinsey. But um, all of this is to say, uh, you don't need a big name. Uh, even if shit doesn't work out for your internship, you can figure it out. And, uh, just keep going at it and uh, don't give up. Would you say that you had like any big differentiator that set you apart from other candidates, not just visa, but something about you that, you know, really set you apart? I mean, not, well, not really. I mean, there's nothing particularly like, uh, I would say that the one thing that I made sure to do, especially for my full time, and there's something I continued is, um, I made sure my mindset was, um, okay, I didn't know if I was necessarily the most qualified, if I had the, the best background of, of the people applying or interviewing. But I knew that if I went for the interview, I wanted to be the most prepared person in the room. Like that was like my goal. So uh, my objective was just to prepare harder than anyone else and, and hope that that gets me through. I love that. So, you know, Spoiler alert, we've already said it earlier, you've just recently accepted an offer at Tesla and started working 2021. So not a lot of students, you know, in the younger years have been able to navigate switching employers. So could you just touch on probably lightly what it was like to recruit while already in a full-time job and how that worked for you or any other, you know, touches of tips that you have there? Yeah, so I, I will start off uh, with the, kind of elephant in the room. Um, I know from my experience plus experience from friends that recruiting after you get a job is uh, made much easier once you have an H-1B. Prior to getting an H-1B, it becomes a little more challenging. 
in my case, I, I do have an H-1B, so that made the switch a little easier. Employers are more comfortable uh, getting candidates who you know, are, are more likely to stay in the US longer term. In terms of the process itself, it was um, similar, I suppose, to full time. I, it started by me reaching out to uh, a recruiter at Tesla um, and getting involved with the recruiting process. Then I had my first round, second round, third round, so on and so forth, and uh, eventually got the offer. Again, my uh, approach was the same, which was, I said, I don't know, um, again, if I'm the most qualified, but I do know that I will be the most prepared. And um, that fortunately worked out for me. No, that's a, like amazing. I think difficult question because I know you said your recruiting spectrum was very broad, but across your recruitment process, how are you preparing for these interviews? You know, and you're telling me there's a three day, you know, it may take three or four days to prepare, but you're doing different industries. I alone, you know, worked with case in point for a little bit. So just curious what that preparation process looked like. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, it certainly varies by industry, um, but there are some commonalities. So um, I would say if, if I'd have to break it down, there's kind of uh, three different things to prepare for. So the first is to learn a lot about the company itself. And um, whether it's McKinsey for consulting or you know Tesla for uh, finance or for engineering, just know everything about the company that you'll be working at. So you know its culture, know the kinds of people, know the values, know their mission, uh, know what they do, know their customers. Um, so I spent a lot of time learning about the company. The second thing I spent a lot of time learning about is the role and the people. So if I get my interviewer names in advance, I learn as much as I can about them and their background, see what commonalities we have. Uh, I learn about the role and the specific position that I'm going to be applying for. So I know what my expectations are and, and what they'd want from me. And to do that, I typically network with other people in that role or reach out to them and, and work with people at the company to just get a better sense of what I'd be doing there. And then the third piece is just learning the technicals. And, and this is what varies across companies. I'd say the first two are relatively constant. Um, again, this changes for consulting, as you mentioned, there are a number of resources. Case in point is one of them. Um, I found doing cases uh, themselves just to be the best practice over any book. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into the technicals because it just it varies so much. But uh, I would say those first two are, are often overlooked. Uh, I think technicals are one of the things that people know that they have to do. Mm -hmm. but the first two are, are underemphasized. So I would spend uh, considerably more time on those first two as well. Cool. And when you're in these interviews, I think sometimes more so with consulting, I don't have much experience with interviews in finance or engineering, but they ask you questions to better understand your thought process. So how do you approach a question where you definitely don't know the answer to? Oh, um. Interesting. Well, it's funny. I don't, I don't know the answer to this. Uh, I would say, um, I mean, start off by acknowledging that you, you may not know the answer. Um, but from there, it's better to showcase your thought process than to just say, hey, I don't know, please help me. Because in the end, companies are looking for someone who's willing to learn, for someone who's able to think on their feet, and for someone who's able to just think through a problem. So even if you don't know an answer, it's okay to say you don't know as long as you like talk through what you think could be the answer, talk through your approach. Cool, yeah, I 100% agree. Do you have overall tips or general pieces of advice for international students who are going to be going into this process now if they haven't started already? Yeah, um, I mean, first off, it, it is daunting. Um, I think the job search generally for everyone is, is challenging for internationals more so because the number of companies you can even apply to is, is more constrained. Um, if I have tips of advice, uh, and, and you, you may have heard it through, through what I was mentioning earlier, but uh, the first piece of advice would be to not give up, so to keep going. Uh, failure happens, failure is normal, you will get rejected. Uh, just keep moving forward and, and you'll eventually be fine. Uh, the second piece of advice would be um, when you get your interviews, to really spend time preparing. Uh, it's far better to spend all your time preparing on, let's say, one interview versus spend like 10% of time in preparing for 10, 10 in different interviews. Um, so don't be afraid to like really learn and, and, and be ready for, um, for an interview. And then 
Finally, my third piece would be um, don't spread yourself out as well. I mean, like I said, focus on a specific industry or focus on a specific place. And I say this because I know that for me, my big reason for spreading out was, well, one, I was interested in the companies, but two, I was also relatively insecure in that I didn't know whether I was going to get an internship. It was it was obviously challenging, and, and I know that there are challenges with being international, and therefore I spread out. Uh, but don't feel that way. I think um, there are plenty of jobs, and um, there are plenty of employers willing to take internationals, uh, although the bar may be a little higher. But but that that does exist. So just feel confident, and uh, best of luck. Great. And I think everyone just in general would be curious, Tesla, you know, a lot of things have happened in the last few months with Tesla, with the stock, with the S&P, with Elon Musk being now like the richest person in the world. Like I think people just follow the news, but what are you going to be doing there? What are you looking forward to? Just any things you have to say in that regard. Yeah, I, I wish I joined eight months ago. Um, <laughs> No, uh, I, I mean, I'm looking forward to a lot. It's it's obviously a very exciting company going through um, rapid expansion right now. Uh, the reason I'm interested in Tesla is um, I'm personally um, very interested in sustainability space. So at Penn, while I studied finance, it was mainly sustainability finance. And then while I did engineering, it was sustainability engineering focused. Um, so that's the field I'm, I'm most passionate about. At McKinsey as well, I was in the sustainability practice. So this is kind of like um, a role, a role that that blends really nicely for me. So uh, the role itself, I'll be part of the engineering finance team. Um, it again is a good background. It's a good blend of my background in engineering and in finance, and it's in sustainability. So um, I'm excited. It's uh, I'm, I'm still fairly early stages, but um, looking forward to an exciting time. That sounds really exciting. We wish you the best of luck and thank you so much for taking out the time on a Sunday to chat with us at Onboard. We really hope some of the stuff that you mentioned today will help international students in all types of situations, maybe in one of the many industries you have your feet in and will inspire them to just stay motivated through this process. So thank you so much. Of course. Thank you and best of luck to anyone who might be listening.